Today on Fresh Vintage, we have our 2016 Honda HRV here, and we're going from the old factory radio to the new hotness. We got ourselves a DeSeta G13. I'm effectively going to call this a smart radio. I'm just going to put a tablet right in the dash of your HRV. We're going to show you every step of the way and get this installed. Let's get started right now. Hey everyone, this is Tom with Fresh Vintage. Just like you heard in the pre-intro there, we have our 2016 Honda HRV. I think this goes up to 2022, if memory serves me correct. Uh, with that, this is your stock radio. If you have an HRV, you're probably familiar with this layout and the controls and buttons. And this gets a little old and it doesn't have CarPlay or Android Auto and so on. So huge shout out to DeSeta for sending this over. Awesome, awesome unit. This is basically a tablet computer, if you will in your dash and we're going to go ahead and plug that into the dash today uh some quick tech specs i believe this one is running a media tech chip it has six gigs of ram and 64 gigs of memory so plenty of horsepower to run the day-to-day -day functions of say a tablet now deseda says that with what's in these two bags we should be able to use all the factory stuff all the factory wiring factory speakers the factory factory steering wheel controls and even the factory backup camera that's in the back of the hatch here we're going to test that theory, and what we're going to do is actually start by removing the old head unit out of the dash. Let's go ahead and get started with digging this out of the dash right now. So overall, this is pretty easy to do, and what you want to do is have the glove box open and then start pulling this trim piece off by the passenger door and work your way towards the steering wheel. The one area that may give you a little bit of difficulty is right here by the four-way switch. That should come out though, and then don't forget to disconnect the wiring on the back side so that you don't actually rip that wiring out. With the trim piece out of the way, we found two bolts that actually have Phillips head screw heads, and they're on the top left and top right. We didn't actually see any on the bottom part of the radio, or so we thought. More on this in just a moment. So after getting these two bolts out, the stereo still wouldn't come out, and we discovered that there's a third bolt way down in the back bottom center of this hole here. So we used an 8 millimeter socket with a quarter inch extension and unscrewed this actual bolt. And then we used a magnetic pickup tool to get this out of the dash without dropping it down into the dash. Now that we confirmed all the bolts are out, the stereo itself is a pretty snug fit in the dash. So take your time. You may have to give it a little English, so to speak. But eventually this will come out, and then you can start disconnecting the wiring. Now that we can see the wiring on the back of the stereo, go ahead and disconnect all these. And there's no need to mark any of these because the wiring harness provided by DeSeta makes this super easy to make it plug and play and just connect all back together. So we have the old OEM head unit out, and just be careful getting this out because it is kind of sharp on the back here. But uh, we have our new DeSeta radio sitting here, and we just wanted to quickly show you some of the wiring, what's in both of these bags that we dumped out and we actually you know, sorted through. The number one wiring harness that uh, you're probably going to need for your HRV, for 99% of you watching this video, is this one right here. And we make that note because there's a second one that does come in the bag. These both came in the same bag. This one we're not finding where we need to use it on our HRV, but you may need it for yours. So we're just going to set that to the side. This is our main harness that we're going to use and actually make sure we get everything up 100% operational. In the rest of this, the second bag here, there's a whole plethora of different things. And we have it all spread out here and it looks like it's a mess, but we'll actually explain everything. This is a GPS antenna. Uh, we're not necessarily going to hook that up, but this is literally a Wi-Fi antenna, which sounds crazy, but there is a little spot back here. If I were to take this off of here, there's actually almost like an old, you know, coaxial cable. You can screw a Wi-Fi antenna onto the back of this. There's also a 4G antenna and a SIM card. If you legit want your actual radio to have 4G, you know, LTE connectivity, this has a setup so that you can do that. And this connects to that same spot. You see there's two of them here this antenna hooks to that some more commonplace stuff there's a microphone and this is the connector to actually gets you to plug into the back here and then this part this has a three and a half millimeter jack that you can see right there but there's a ton of different stuff in here if you have camera inputs if you have subwoofer outputs it's right there for you also uh, there's multiple multiple USB inputs that you can actually put into the actual DeSeta unit. 
Something kind of cool, this will actually export. There's an HDMI port that is, in fact, HDMI. You can export HDMI from this. Say if you wanted to run it to a different screen, you know, maybe on the back seat for the, for the kids, or if you wanted to put a TV or something in here and just have a tailgate party, you could do that off of this unit. But let's go ahead and get all of the wiring put together, and then we're going to start knitting this together in a dash. Let's go do that right now. So just wanted to show you real quick the actual connections here. This one should be pretty much plug and play. There's that. And this one, there's a bunch of them on here, so make sure you take your time and get the right one connected to the right one. And the next thing you want to do is, I was looking for this, and it's actually part of the harness, so if you're looking for the actual radio antenna, it's right here. We just want to hook this up. And we have our factory wiring. Now, according to what we've seen in the manual, the factory backup camera should function with what we have here. So we're going to go ahead and plug all of this in and then carefully feed it into the dash. And then we're gonna fire this thing up and uh, see if everything works. So that one goes right there. This guy goes right here. Make sure this one clicks in properly. There we go, I clicked. So you might not be able to see it that well, but we have our microphone mounted. And then for this, we're just gonna run this behind the actual dash, behind the actual panel here. And it should have a nice clean fit to it. And then there's a really convenient, you can put your hand right there. So we just took that ball of wire and we just stuck it back here. And this is the actual, actual connector. And that plugs in right on the back here. So I'm going to go right here. And just plug that in. There we go. We realized that the backup camera was not functioning uh, at all. And uh, we were kind of like, what's going on here? And in double checking and tinkering around, long story short, we found a uh, camera in. This is two camera in. And that's coming off of this wiring harness and you need to go to the actual bag you have to grab your bag and then in here there's a whole input and on this side there's actually camera in and i'll make a note here because there's two camera outs coming off of this video or this actual pigtail here and let me show you the one reads side camera so some hrvs are equipped with cameras when you're turning right this actual hrv does not have that but it does have the factory backup camera so you need to actually plug the two camera in to the actual camera in or cam in and you're basically completing the video signal circuit once we did that i'll just go ahead and do this and we're just going to let it not fall when we hit home and I'm going to put the car in reverse. And there is our actual backup camera. And now we're gonna just slowly feed everything into the dash. And before we do that, just make a quick note. You remember in the video when we pulled the old radio out, there was a screw deep down in here. There's no bracket on this for that screw. So this is kind of just friction fit with the help of the two screws up here but there's no screw down here that you can so you're going to have one extra screw for the next car so to speak but with that it's in the actual dash feels very firm in there so let me grab the keys and we'll watch it fire up make sure that the volume is working you can see that i'm using the steering wheel controls here and we won't play the radio because of copyrighted music but you can hear as i push the steering wheel controls it's beeping so these are functioning that's awesome to see there we go and as you just saw this is our home screen and we're gonna peel this off at some point, but a lot of cool stuff in here, a lot of cool features, and something that you saw very briefly there, let me just open the driver's side door 
So it shows you that both doors are open. And when I shut this, it lets you know that the hatch and the passenger door is open. So really cool to see that. And from here, we're going to finish installing this. We'll get the screws in and show you the finished look. And then we'll do a few click throughs and we'll show you a CarPlay running and a few other odds and ends, cool features of this unit. We have the actual DeSeta unit in here. It's snugly in place. And the challenge we ran into is you can see the width here on this. It just will not go in. We even tried pulling this out and maybe like sitting it on there and it just will not cooperate. So we're going to call out some technical specs here. We went to the store and we bought an M5. So the diameter of the bolt is M5 and then 25 millimeters long. So it's just a little bit longer because the face here sits just a hair off of the edge of where the screws in. So this is an M5 bolt, 25 millimeters long. I believe this was an M6 washer, but it makes it small enough to where in theory we should be able to actually thread this in. So quick update upon further, you know, just trying to get this to fit properly. We realized that this is slotted over here. And if you look at the other one over here, it's actually a, like an ear, like a dog ear. And I'm, I'm sorry, not a dog ear, but an actual, like an enclosed. We realized that what we have to do is actually kind of pull this out and slide this in under this bolt. So we have these both in now, and we're just going to crank them down and actually get this to stop moving a little bit like this. But uh, we'll be right back. We're going to put the actual trim piece on next. So we have this nice and snug. You can feel it. It is not going anywhere. And what we're gonna do is just put the trim piece back on. Don't forget your four-way switch here. I just wanna plug that in. There you go, click. And I will commend Honda for building this thing to where all of this doesn't really need any screws because it really is just that easy. Let's grab the keys. Four ways are working. Let's grab the keys and we'll fire this up. And here is the finished product. Overall, uh, pretty easy to install and use. Once you get in here, it is a matter of uh, having pretty much every actual app you can think of. I mean, there's literally Netflix, Instagram. Now, obviously, the, uh, the government doesn't want you using all of these and there's a feature you can disable while you're driving. It won't use it, just like you let use a radio and CarPlay and stuff. But if you want to go in and dig in the settings, you can find that. And in this, there, I mean, you can see the amount of apps. There's literally YouTube, Waze, everything. So for what we're doing here, we're just going to plug in our iPhone. And boom, we're right into CarPlay. And I do have an Android Auto phone. We're not going to take the time to do that here, but it does support Android Auto right here. Overall, nice unit. Uh, snappy, responsive. Definitely take some time, do, do some research on the actual functionality to make sure this is the uh, radio for you. But I would say it's a pretty clean install. And shout out to DeSeta for building a quality product like this because it Seems very fluid, very fast. Some of these don't have enough RAM or they don't have enough memory or the processor's laggy, but this seems to be very, very responsive and quick. And the buttons, I would say the one nitpick here, if I was gonna nitpick something, I'd like to have these buttons over here so at a glance I could just push because I kind of have to lean over and look, but from the driver's seat anyway. But with that being said, uh, really, really clean install. And we'll leave a link for this radio if you're looking to buy. And they have a bunch of different options if you have a newer Suburban or a newer uh, Honda or something like that. Bunch of different options here. With that, we appreciate you watching. If you like classic cars, if you like muscle cars, if you like radio installs, if you like keeping your car certified fresh and on the road, Fresh Vintage is your channel. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.